Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank and praise. We give you glory. Give you honor and praise. We magnify your name. We bless you. We thank you. We just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Just worship you. And we thank you. We just give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We bless you. We just magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, heart to understand what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. In the name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you right now. We praise you and we glorify your name. Hallelujah. We bless you and we thank you. Say, Lord Jesus, open my ears, my eyes, my heart, and mind to hear, see, understand, and perceive what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me through God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give him praise for the power of the word of God. Amen. We're on. We're good. We'll open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. The Lord is good, isn't he? We'll start at verse 25 when you get there. Matthew 6, verse 25. Hallelujah. Therefore I say unto you, uh, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor for your body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. You know, the fowls of the air, for they, they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into the barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You're not much better than they. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your to stature? Why make you take your thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like on one of these. Uh, wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which th today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, you little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Where will shall we be clothed? After all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows you have need of all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought uh, for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought of the things of itself. For sufficient to the day is what the evil are there. Let the word of free course and be glorified. We bind every spirit of hindrance in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many, know, how many, how many um, times have you read this scripture? You've heard it many times, right? You know, don't worry about what you shall eat, uh, what you should drink, or how you should be clothed. After all the things the Gentiles or unbelievers seek after, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. We know that by heart. Probably just, you know, heard that so many times, right? But what is the Lord trying to, trying to get across to us in these verses? First of all, he's not denying the fact that we all live here on the earth in a natural physical world with natural physical needs and desires. We know we live on the earth, right? We have natural uh, needs and desires on the earth that he's not denying that fact. Amen? Uh, such as food. We all need food, don't we? I mean, you got meats, chicken, fish, lobster, whatever y'all eat. Amen? Steak, right? Um, uh, vegetables, fruits. We know, he knows we have these needs of these things, right? Uh, things to drink, water, juice, tea, whatever you, amen? Clothing. You know, we got shoes, hats, jackets, amen? Pants, shirts, Amen? Uh, women, you know, like your dresses in the whole closet full of shoes, you know. You know, after all, your father have know you have need of these things, right? Come on. <laughs> Housing, you know, some people need two bedroom houses, some need three, four bedroom houses, apartments, right? Everything that goes inside those houses, right? We God knows you need these things, right? We need transportation, like cars, SUVs, trucks, vans, whatever you need, Jeep. He knows we need transportation. Amen. How many know he knows we need money, right? We all need money to buy physical things we need or desire in this earth, don't we? You can't, you try to tell a electric company, well, you know, God is good, you know? You want to see some money, right? Amen. So Jesus said, your heavenly father knows you have what need of all these things. Then he said, but, did he say that? But what? Whenever, whenever you see a, a, the word but, in a sentence, you know that what's going to be said next will be a contrast to what was said before. Every time you see a word but, you know what's about to be said next will be a contrast to, what, to what's going to be said afterwards. Amen? Somebody say God is good. Amen? 
He said, but, he said, God, you see, Heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. Right? But, right? But what? Seek you, ye first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness. And all these things we just talked about will be what? Added unto you. Uh, now, what's going on here? Obviously, God wants us to have these things, right? That we need and desire, right? But there's, obviously, there's a problem here. Amen? And the problem is that we at times get so caught up in the stress and worry about attaining, obtaining these things that before we realize it, these things are consuming the majority of our thoughts, our focus, and our actions. Amen? That's so? And all? And the more we get consumed about seeking these things, the more stressed and agitated we become, the less joyful and peaceful we, we become, the more spiritually empty and drained we become, right? And the easier it is to become addicted to things that are sinful and wrong. Amen? And the easier it becomes, uh, easier to lose sight of God's plan and purpose for our, our short period of time on the earth because we're seeking after those things. God knows we need them, but God says something is wrong here. Amen? Amen. So Jesus said, instead of spending all our time and thoughts and focus and actions on seeking these physical needs and desires, spend the majority of our time, what? And thoughts, focus and actions on what? Seeking first the kingdom of God. Amen. And his righteousness. Part of my message to, to, tonight is um, seeking first the kingdom. Seeking first what? The kingdom. Now Matthew 6.33, the Passion Translation says it like this here. Above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him, then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Passion translation. Above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him, then all these things, less important things, will, will but be given to you abundantly. Isn't that something, y'all? So God calls the natural, physical things what we need less important. He didn't say they weren't important. Compared to the kingdom of God, amen, they are what? Less important. Amen? Yeah, what we do today? Tonight? Close. Somebody say God is good. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? So compared to what? The kingdom of God, these things we think we, we go after all the time, we're worrying about all the time. God said they're important, but they're less important compared to the eternal things of my kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah. And matter of fact, God calls the natural things we need and desire, he, call, he calls them add-ons. They'll be added to you, right? They're add-ons, amen? He sees them as additions to the main thing. So the thing we're worrying about, I need this here, I need this here, I need that, I want that, which God knows you have need of or even desire, but God's like, he calls them add-ons. They're additions to the main thing. Amen? The addition to the main thing. Amen? Hallelujah. But the problem with most Christians is, you know, they have made the add-ons the main thing. Right? And they have made the main thing, which is seeking first God's kingdom, the add-on. Amen? Amen? In other words, they're seeking the temporary things. Food, clothing, housing, transportation, all this stuff we need, amen, and better, more money and all that. They're seeking that, you know, and they're putting that the main thing and they're adding, they're adding okay, God, I, when I get to you, I'll get to, you, I'll get to your stuff. But I got this important stuff here. So I, I, add, I add you on when I can get, you know, when I get a time to add your kingdom in. And that's, that's shocking, but it's the truth. I've been walking with God long enough to see the majority of Christians, that's how they operate. They might come to church on Sunday. Like I did my, my duty, but the rest of the week, everything, they're just there. They're seeking after stuff. Amen? Like it's going out of style. Like it's Black Friday or something like that. <laughs> Y'all know what it is, right? Jesus said, what does a man profit if he gains the whole world, all the material stuff in this world, and loses his own soul? Amen? Or in other words, lose out on, on eternal things. Amen. What did you profit? Amen. The devil tried to get us distracted. Amen. Jesus also said, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? In other words, you can't buy eternal spiritual things with physical, natural, material stuff. 
You can't exchange that before God. I mean, you can get all the stuff you want, but you can't exchange it for eternal things. Amen? Hallelujah. Can we see this, y'all? Simon um, the sorcerer tried that before, remember? Um, Peter was laying hands on people. They got the Holy Ghost, spoke with tongue. He said, uh, offer the money so he can what? Do the same thing. He said, you can't buy the gift of God with money. You can't exchange material things for eternal, eternal things. Amen? Material things, you can't do it. Amen? So if a Christian wastes all their time on the earth seeking material stuff, when they stand before the Lord, they, they won't be able to exchange the material things for eternal rewards. Okay, God, I, I, you know, I did do that. I got this. Can I exchange this for an eternal reward? Can't do it. What can you give in exchange for your soul? Amen? You know, nowadays, they advertise now on TV, come uh, exchange your cash for gold. Yeah, all the time. Exchange for cash for gold. Amen? But, you know, you can't do that with God. Amen? You try that with God, it's like, it's like you're trying to... You're trying to um, you know, exchange wood, hay, and stubble for gold, silver, and precious stone. Don't work. Because God said all the stuff on the earth that is natural on the earth that we need right now is going to burn up one day. It's not going to go into the next life. Amen? So that's like, if that's all you did in life, your pursuit most of the time is going to be like when you stand before the Lord, it's going to go before the fire, and it's going to be wood, hay, and stubble. Amen? And it's shocking, but most Christians, that's what their, most of their focus is, is the material life. I need food, I need clothing, I need transportation, I need housing, I need money. And they, that's the main drive in their life. And they go after all they got. And God is the add-on. They got her backwards. Seek first the material stuff and God will be added to me. Amen? Hallelujah. The Lord is saying that we the people of God. Amen? We, we, how many of us live in time of great evil right now? I mean, great wickedness, violence, dangerous times. I said last week, we got to walk um, circumspectly because the days are evil. I think I said last week, we were like in the 19th week of this year. It was like 198 mass shootings. Now added to this week, that's 199. And this, this, this is crazy because you got somebody going into seven, eight, eight, seven, eight nine year olds killing nine, I mean, 20 something got killed, something like that. 19, 18 to 19, it's a lot. Yeah, and others got wounded. The devil's trying after our children. But that violent spirit is strong. Amen? So we're in dangerous times, like the Bible says. And some people haven't woke up yet, you know, to what's going on in the spirit realm. I said when you walk, um, you got to wake to what's happening. Amen? Get full of God's power. Walk uprightly. Walk, you know, in a way where you observe what's, what's happening all around you, the danger, amen, and to make right, wise decisions in life. And if we don't do that, we, some of us just totally sleep, like a zippity doo dah, like don't realize that bombs are, you know, and we're still seeking after stuff that's going to, you ever see those movies like, um, what's that guy's name? He's the uh, treasure hunter. What's that guy's to go? I can't think of he, who? Indiana Jones. And they, they're seeking treasure in those caves. And then, you know, they grab, they grab the wrong thing, and then all of a sudden, the, everything starts falling apart. And he's like, get out of here. Let's get out of here. Because, you know, but all that but one guy's greedy. He's, he's still trying to go after the gold. You know, man, he got a piece of gold in his hand, and a rock hit him. He's just like <laughs> smashed with a piece of gold he, because of what? He's going after stuff more than his life. And, once, and other guys got out because my life is more important than getting this stuff here. And a lot of times, once we're Christian in the dorm, we're going after stuff in this world. God said, so you be going after eternal things. Amen? But we're like, no, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Amen? Hallelujah. So God has said we need to make an extreme focus change. We need an extreme focus change. By seeking first the kingdom of God, constantly chasing after the realm of God's kingdom, and the righteousness that proceeds from him. The days are evil. The days are filled with evil. Amen? Hallelujah. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Amen. This helping you so far? But it's a lot of God's people have gotten distracted by the enemy. Remember he said that when the word of God is sown, come the, uh, the devil, the stake of the word. Amen. What's he do? Brings the cares of distractions of this life, cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, right? Desire of other things. And they choke out that the word of God. 
Amen. They become unfruitful in life. That's because they're seeking that. What happened? They're, they're more concerned with the cures of this life, uh, pleasures of this life, lots of other things. They get so caught up in what God says gets choked out of their life. Amen. That's what the devil, he uses those things like that to get you distracted. Hallelujah. Colossians. Chapter 3. Look at verse 1. If you then being what? Risen with Christ, seek what? Those things which where? Are above. Where Christ sits at where? The right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the earth. For what? You are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall what? You also appear with him in glory. Isn't that powerful, y'all? Verse 1 says we are risen with Christ. Verse 3 says we are dead. Sounds I'm walking around with you. I'm dead. We're talking about I'm dead, God. Well, Ephesians, 5, Ephesians 2, 5 through 6 says, when we were, even when we were dead in sins, God made us alive together with Christ. When Christ died, why did Christ die? He died because of our sin. He took our sins upon him. That sin brought about death. It was for our sins. And it says when we receive what we died, our old nature, inside nature died with him. Amen? And it says when he rose, when he rose together, God made us alive together. With, when Christ rose, spiritually speaking, you, we arose together from that deadness of sin. Amen? And then it says, and made us, he made us to sit together with Christ. Amen? In heavenly places. So we were dead with him. We buried with him. Through, amen? It's our sin nature in, inside. Then when he rose, we rose up at it, back to the life, the new life of God on the inside of us. And then spiritually speaking, as he rose, our, we're, we rose spiritually with him and we're seated with him, spiritually speaking, in the heavenly realms. In other words, we changed uh, citizenship. Where even though this old fallen world, we're now we're citizens of heaven above. Our life is from above now. Everything we do, even though we're on the earth, we're called alien. We're called, we're called, we're going through strangers and pilgrims on the earth. We're going through. We're in the world. We're not of this world. Amen? We're here on assignment. Amen? To do certain things. Amen? Well, like a military, you're overseas to do a certain, a certain thing. And Paul told Timothy, any soldier uh, does not, that, that wars does not get entangled in the affairs of this life. So he can please him that's made him a soldier. Amen? And we've forgotten that we're here on assignment on purpose for God. Amen? And you know, somebody in the military overseas, they shouldn't be so caught up in a society to forget there's a war going on. It's, they don't end up, don't show up at the base. Don't show up for the war because they're out there partying. They get court-martialed for stuff like that, can't they? Amen? Come on, y'all. So, isn't that powerful, y'all? Seated with Christ in heavenly places. He said, he that overcomes will sit with me in my throne. Amen? Hallelujah. And because we're seated with Christ, we're now told to do two very important things. Amen? Number one, we are to seek those things that are above. That's verse one, right? What's it say? Verse one. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God and he, you're seated with him. So if you're risen with him, you're seated with him. Amen. Spiritually speaking, we need to seek those things that are what? Come on. Above. And two, it tells us we are to now set our affections on things above. They say that there in verse, uh, was that verse two, right? Not on the earth. In other words, your, your, all your focus, all your love, all your amen, tension, you know, your, your, your affections can be on God, things of God, or on the natural things of the earth. And God said you need to set them, since you're risen with Christ, you were dead with him, you're alive with him now, you're seated with him. In heavenly realms, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth that's going to perish one day. Amen? Hallelujah. That's what many are distracted right now. Hallelujah. Isn't God awesome, y'all? How many of God gives us a free will? He don't make you do it. You can choose. We can choose whether, whether we set our, where we set our affections at. You can choose. Amen? We can choose what we choose to seek after. God don't make you do it. Amen? This is why Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. Either he will, what, hate the one 
and love the other. Or else he what? He will hold to one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Mammon was a god they served back then to obtain material gain and wealth. It was a god they served. You know, it was the god of mammon, you know, so they, and they served him with, with fervently. They gave all the time. I mean, they're, they're like, man, fervently, so I'm going to serve like this god. The god of mammon, I mean, he's going to give me material wealth and money, yes. And that's what they served him. And God said, you can't, in other words, you can't, you can't have your focus so much on gaining material things. You know, we need material things, like you need money, you need stuff like that. Amen, to where it becomes your affection, almost like an idol to you. Cause, and you got, then God gets in the background. You can't serve one. You, you, either God can get pushed to the background, amen, or other stuff gets pushed to the background. Either you, you, you honor God and, you know what I mean, and, and just, you know, think little of that, or you think little of God and big of that stuff. That's what despises me, you think little of, amen. That's what happens when you try to, amen, to the seeking first the kingdom, going after the stuff, oh, I got time, I don't have time, God, I got to get this, I got to get that. And really what it is, it shows where your faith is. He said, that's what you're doing. Instead of seeking God, mean you have what? Oh, ye of what? Little faith. That means your faith in God, trusting him is real small. Amen? Isn't that something, y'all? So what does it mean? To seek the things that are above. What does it mean to seek the things that are above? It means to seek those things that pertain to the operation of God's kingdom. Seek those things that pertain to the operation of God's kingdom. Amen? The kingdom of God is fully, is, how many, how many are in heaven? People in heaven, angels in heaven. The kingdom of God is at full operation in heaven. I mean, how many, how many believe God's will is being done in heaven right now? I mean, fully being done. Amen? His kingdom is manifested, his power. And, and God says, seek those things that are above. In other words, seek the things that pertain to the operation of God's kingdom. That's what he's talking about. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, God wants his kingdom to manifest on earth right here. He wants the things of his kingdom to, to manifest right down here so what? His will can be done on earth as it is where? That's the will of God. But I mean, on the earth, God gave the earth to us and we're his body. So if we don't cooperate with him, his kingdom will not come into manifestation. His will won't be done. So the devil gets us sidetracked with the less important stuff. Amen? So that his kingdom and power and the glory cannot manifest on the earth, amen, so he has no, no, no resistance and he can do what he wants to do with no resistance. This is what happens when we do, when we seek after, amen, the more inferior stuff than, than the main thing, amen? God, what was happening? What's going on on the earth, God? Well, we're part of not our part. We're not doing our part, amen? So tonight, I want to talk about some things God wants to bring down from the heavenly kingdom down into the earth. Amen? Which things we must make our first priority to seek after. Something God wants to bring down from heaven, his kingdom in heaven, down into the earth. Which things we must make our first priority to seek after. Amen? Hello, what's the title of my message today? Seeking first the kingdom. And when we do, what happens? All the material stuff we need will be added to us in abundance. First things first, prioritize, focus, exchange, extreme focus change right now. Hallelujah. Number one, God wants his, peep, his power manifested on the earth. God wants his power manifested on the earth. Amen. That's the first thing God wants done right now. He wants his power manifested on the earth. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to Psalm 66. Isn't the Lord awesome, y'all? Amen, I'm back. <laughs> Psalm 66. Glory to God. So it said, what do we have to seek after? So I'm talking about some things that's on God's heart. See, if we, don't, if we don't pray and seek God for those things, they'll never come into the earth because God gave the authority on earth to us. Amen? So these are some things we need to prioritize ourselves to seek and to bring into the earth, amen. When, you do, when we're doing these things, that means we're seeking first the kingdom, amen. 
things that pertain to the kingdom of God. And then what we need will be added to us. Amen. Psalm 66. And God wants, I said he what? He wants his power to manifest on the earth. That's the top priority with God. He wants his power to come into manifestation on the earth. Amen. So I said, why don't God just do it? Well, we got a part to play. Look at Psalm 66, verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord God, all ye lands. Sing the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how what? How awesome are your, you and your works through the greatness of your power? What's going to happen? Your enemies submit themselves unto you. Through the greatness of what? His power, his enemies submit them. So, so evil will not be subdued until the power of God is manifested in the earth. Evil will not be subdued until the power of God is manifest in the earth. Amen. And so that, that is one a priority because Jesus said, he said, thine is the kingdom, thine is the power. Amen. There's something called the power of the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's what God wants us to, are you with me now? Amplify says your people will be, your people will offer themselves willingly and, and participate in your battle. Amen. Isn't that something, y'all? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got the right one. Okay. Okay, I think I had another one I want to write down there. I forgot. To, I didn't write it down. But there's another scripture that says your people will, will, your people will um, be willing in the day of your power. Amen. I can't find the scripture there. Amen. In other words, when the power of God comes into manifestation, guess what happens? God's people will volunteer freely. Amen. To do the will of God. That was a revival come. Those who are lukewarm, those who are... Um, um, backslidden, all of a sudden the power of God hit him and revival begins to take place. And people want to get back with God and get right with God. Amen. Remember the Bible says in uh, Ezekiel that um, he said when um, there were dry bones everywhere. Remember the story? And as dry bones were there, the Bible says that when the power, when the power of God hit them, they rose up on their feet and became a mighty army. Amen. So what it means is they say because they were like dead, they had no life in them. He said, listen, Ezekiel, I want you to speak to the wind. Tell me the power of God. Breathe upon these slain. Amen. And when the power of God hit them, they rose back up on their feet and they became a mighty army. Amen. So God's able to use his army. Amen. To, su to subdue evil in the earth. But it needed power to come upon his people. Amen. So the power of God come, it subdues his enemy, but the power must come upon his people, the army of God on the earth. Amen. So God said one of the priorities of the kingdom is he wants the power of the kingdom. Amen. To come into manifestation, the power of the kingdom of God to come into manifestation. Amen. It makes sense, everybody, y'all? Turn to Luke chapter 4. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4. Look at verse 32. The devil got people, the body of Christ, sidetracked right now. And he's just laughing because he's got no resistance. Amen? Very little power is being, matter of fact, the Bible said in the last days that in the, the churches, they're going to have a form of godliness, but no power. The devil can hang around and hang out and stuff like that. Come on, y'all. Luke 4. Look at verse 32 when you have it. <coughs> they were astonished at Christ's doctrine. For what? His word was with what? Power. Amen? Power. Amen? And in the synagogue, there was what? A man which had a, un a spirit of unclean devil. No, there's no clean devils, y'all. And cried out with a loud voice, saying, Le leave us alone. Whatever I have to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth, are you come what? To destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now think about this here. This man was going to the synagogue for many years. That devil was in that guy. Why, why all of a sudden the devil started acting up, started talking? Because those, those, those Pharisees and priests that were preaching had no power. So that devil was, was at home. He's relaxed. Are you with you now? Is that music playing somewhere? Okay, you're like, oh, you'll hear something like, uh, okay. <laughs> did you turn off the thing or did you tur turn it down? Did you turn, uh, okay. We hear something ringing, okay. Yeah, because what, what happened to go, to go through the system if it's not off? Okay, like, what's this, this angel singing here or something? What's going on? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. But think about this here. This man was here all those years, 
in the synagogue and, and that, that, that demon was just comfortable going to church. Amen. But all of a sudden now that he's getting agitated because he can't stand being in that atmosphere because something has changed. The power of the kingdom, God, is, is in manifestation. Amen. The power from above is on in heaven is coming down to the earth. And the demons can't stand that power because they submit, they flee at the power. They're, 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 they're uh, flee at the power of God. They're destroyed by his power. Amen. And how does devil like, man, leave me alone. Stop. I want to leave. I want to stay here. Leave me alone. Amen. Have you come to destroy us? Yes. What the Bible said, for this purpose, the Son of God manifested to what? To destroy. Come on, y'all. The works of the devil. How? By the power of God that was on him. And God said, now we, as children of God, we're manifest, we're here to destroy his works as well. How? We can't do it without the power. So if we're not seeking the, that power, amen, we're not, we're, not, we're not being like we should be. Amen? Hallelujah. Look at verse 35. Jesus rebuked him. He rebuked the devil. Don't talk, don't have a long conversation with him. What did he say? You with me? Verse 35, what did he say? Hold your what? No, that's the King James Version. Shut up and come out. <laughs> he only had two words for the devil, shut up and get out, right? And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him, heard him not. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what, what a word is this? For what? With authority and what else? With power. He commands unclean spirits, they what? They come out. So what happened? The power of God was manifested. Amen? And devils came out of people. They came out of places. Because the power of God, the power of the kingdom was a manifestation. Amen? Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is heaven. Amen? For years of the kingdom and the power. Some of the power of the kingdom must come into the operation in the earth. Amen? And it's our job to seek till that power flows. Amen? Hallelujah. Second thing God wants is to manifest his glory on the earth. His glory. On the earth, in the midst of all this darkness. Man, the Bible says darkness will cover the earth. Gross darkness to people. I mean, it's happening right now. He said, but you rise and shine because your light has come. The glory will rise up on you. Amen? What is the glory? The glory is God's heavy, weighty presence. It's the atmosphere of heaven. Amen? That pervades heaven. It comes down to the earth. And when that glory comes, miracles take place. Miracles happen. Amen? That's when the atmosphere you know, heaven is like, like power is like, like, like a violent, violent power that destroys things, amen? But the glory is the happening. The heavy, weighty presence of God comes down. And heaven comes down to the earth. And amen? And then that glory, miracles take place. And God wants his glory, amen, of the kingdom to come into manifestation. That's why I said, Don is the kingdom, the power, and what else? The glory. Look at John chapter 2. John chapter 2. The Lord is good, y'all. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Very familiar uh, passage of scripture here. John 2. Start at verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana, the Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus was called the disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. He said, woman, what have I to do with you? Mine hour has not yet come. His mother said to his servants, whatever he says to you, what? Do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, getting two and three fur cones apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. They filled, it, filled them up to the brim. He said, draw it out now and give to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, knew not where it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. When men have well drunk, they have, which is worse. But you kept the good wine until now. Verse 11, this beginning of what? Miracles. Somebody say miracles. How did he do the miracles? Jesus came to Galilee, what? And manifested what? Forth his what? His glory. Amen. So the, he manifested the glory of God in, amen, into the into earth, and that glory caused miracles to take place. The glory is a heavy, weighty presence of God. The atmosphere that pervades heaven comes down to the earth, 
Amen. And it calls it ups, it up ends natural laws to bring about miraculous things. And God wants his glory. Remember Christ, he said, he prayed in John 17, he said, Lord, the glory that you have given me, I've given to them. Amen. So what? The same things that I had and did, I want them to have access to the same things. Are you with me now? But it just don't happen without, without seeking it. Seek ye first, what? What's he mean? Talking about the things that pertain to the kingdom of God, to the kingdom of heaven. He wants that kingdom to come into manifestation on the earth. But we're so busy about seeking other stuff and not the main things. Amen? This, it won't come to the earth. Let me, let me give you an um, example of why we got to seek this here. Hallelujah. Turn to um, Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Seek first the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Things that pertain. So God's like I said, we got out, we got sidetracked. And we're, we're even the church, we're doing everything else, entertainment, wisdom of men. We're not seeking the main thing. That's why the devils are doing what he wants. He, they're comfortable. Amen. And that's why things aren't changing. People aren't being delivered. Enemies are running rampant. Amen. And we're the body, we're the army of God. We're the body of Christ. And God said we get back to seeking first the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. And we got to a church in America, especially we're like the lay of the scene. We're rich and increased with goods. I think we have need of nothing. We got, we turned, nothing wrong with having stuff, but we, we, made, we made the priority of getting stuff, give me more stuff, stuff, stuff. And, and the, the main thing is like set on the side. Amen? Hallelujah. Psalm 63. Look at verse 1. Oh God, you are my God. Early or earnestly, wholeheartedly, I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry, thirsty land where no water is. In other words, th this is David praying. <clears throat> he lives in the midst of the world like we do nowadays where, where the lack of God's presence and his power and glory is missing. You know, the enemy is oppressing anywhere. And it made him long for that which is from above. Amen? To come down into the earth realm. Because once, once that from above will come down to the earth, he knows things can change on the earth. So he longed for it. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wholeheartedly seek you. Amen? I'm going to thirst after. I'm going to go after him. I, I long for, amen? I'm going to seek first the things that pertain to the kingdom. Amen? What, what is he praying for? Look at verse 2. I want to see what? I want to see your power. I want to see your glory. A manifestation of seeing the sanctuary. In other words, I want to see a manifestation of your power. I need, I got enemies on the earth that's trying to stop me. I need power because enemies, they, they submit to your power. They, they flee when your power comes. Amen. I need some miracles in my life because God, amen, things look pretty bad. So I need your glory to come into manifestation so I can have miraculous things in my life. But I got I to gotta seek you for it. I got to thirst for it more than, more than, look what it says here, um, the next verse here. Because what? Your loving kindness is better than what? What's he talking about? He's talking about, you know, the natural things. You're, you're knowing you and your power and your presence is better than this natural things. I need, this, I need stuff in this life, but your way, your kingdom is better than this natural stuff in this life. Therefore, I'm going to put the priority seeking your kingdom first. Manifest your glory first. Amen? Instead of going out to things I need in this life, I would need that stuff, but your loving kindness is better than things in this life. So I'm going to put priority first and seek first the kingdom that pertains to the kingdom of God. Make sense, everybody, y'all? Hallelujah. See, it's like he had his priorities, in, in, uh, amen? I will bless you while I live, amen? Whew, that's awesome, amen? It's going down. It's just a powerful thing. Uh, verse 4, I'll bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands into your name. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness. My mouth shall praise you. With joyful lips, I will remember you upon my bed, meditate on you at night and watch. That's like he's, he's consumed with God. His focus is on God and his ways of the kingdom. Right? Because you've been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows hard after you. Your right hand holds me up. Amen? But those that seek my soul to destroy it will go down to lower parts of the earth. They shall be fall like the sword. Amen? Fortune of for foxes, but the king shall rejoice in you. Everyone that swears by him shall be shall, uh, shall glory. 
my mouth shall, uh, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. See how he was focused on God, his kingdom, his righteousness, his power, his glory, and he sought after it. Amen. And he came in manifestation. David had some miraculous stuff happen in his life, didn't he? Some great deliverances from his enemies because he sought the Lord. He sought God, sought his power, sought his glory of the kingdom to come. Amen. It was better. He says, your, your loving kindness is better than everything in this life. And they are ever have in this life. Yours is far better. That's the attitude we have to take as the Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't he, isn't he awesome? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Three. God wants his healing anointing to manifest in the earth to heal people of their sicknesses and diseases. God wants his healing anointing to manifest in the earth to heal people of their sicknesses and of their diseases. I mean, believe that so. Acts 10 30 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with healing power. He went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. Um, if you don't believe God wants to heal people, Jesus said, you see me, you've seen the Father. And he went about, everybody was sick and diseased. What did he do? He healed them of that disease because God's not his will for his people to be sick or diseased. I talked about on Sunday, the compassion of the Lord. And compassion is feeling what you, feeling the needs of the person and their hurts and their pains and compelled to do something to alleviate the suffering and the pain. He had great compassion on people. Amen. So God, as he had compassion back then, when he sees people sick and diseased, uh, pressed by the devil in their body, he wants to heal them. So he wants his healing anointing to come back and manifest on the earth so people can be healed of sickness and disease. The enemy is oppressing people with all kinds of diseases. But guess what? That ain't going to happen because we're his body now. It has to come upon us. Amen? But it ain't going to just drop on anybody. We gotta, that's part of the kingdom we must seek after. Amen? When you seek, you will what? find with all your heart not half-hearted David said the way you do it you seek with all your heart your soul got a thought you got to long for it you got to thirst for it amen as a dry and a thirsty land you got to your soul got to follow hard after it and when you seek with all your heart you're going to find it amen hallelujah turn to Luke chapter 5 Luke chapter 5 God wants his healing anointing to manifest on the earth to heal people of their sicknesses and their what? Diseases. Hallelujah. Luke 5. Hallelujah. Say amen when you have it. Hallelujah. And it came to pass on a certain day as Christ was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was what? Present to heal them. So in other words, that heal anointing that he was anointed with, it was activated. It was, amen, present to heal. And you know the story. I'm not going to read the whole story, but it was, you know, they didn't get healed because they were there trying to criticize him. But there was one man, he read later on, he came, he couldn't, he was paralyzed, couldn't walk. And he got four men on stretchers. I mean, to hold, the, I mean, to hold him on each side of the stretcher. They said, they said, we can't get in. There's too many people there. He said, let me down through the roof. He broke the roof up. And Bob said, when Jesus saw their faith, he, man, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. And he got up, he walked. That power healed this man of paralysis. Are you with me now? He couldn't even walk all his life. But when that healing power came into manifestation, guess what? It healed every type of sickness. It healed every type of disease in people's lives. How I many know that's true right now? If the God's healing power will come in like the Christ said, the works that I do, what? You should do also. So if we get our priorities right and start seeking the kingdom, amen? And he said, like I said earlier, you know, the things that you need, those natural things we all need, food, clothing, housing, we talk transportation. God said, I'll add that to you, but we got, we're, not, we're not going after the main things. We're here, we're here for a short period of time to do the works of the Lord. Amen? And you get, re you get rewarded for your works. He said, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to get to every man according to what? All the stuff they got on the earth, material stuff? No. As your works shall be. Amen? Hallelujah. 
So you know the story. He got up. He walked. Amen. They, they, they're like, amazed. how did this happen? Amen. Well, how did that power get manifested? Just drop anywhere? Well, look at, look at the verse 16. It tells you how, how it got manifested. Uh, Luke 5, 16. And what? Jesus? Let me go to, go to verse. I'm going to go to verse 15 first. So much more that when a fame abroad of Christ, great multitudes came to hear and what be healed by him of their infirmities. He healed people with that healing power. How did that power get manifest on him? Verse 16. He withdrew himself into the wilderness and he did what? Oh, prayer is seeking God. Amen. So it just didn't just happen. You know, you got to seek, seeking, you know, seeking is seeking God in prayer. Amen. As you're seeking for the things that pertain to the kingdom of God, what's in heaven comes down to the earth. The healing anointing and power, it came down from heaven. Amen. It came into manifestation. Amen. And as he, he sought God at the power, the healing anointing and power came into manifestation. And people, when they came in contact with people, they got healed of their sickness and disease. So God's like saying, we got to get our priorities right and start seeking the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. Seek first, then all these things that we taught we need and desire in this life will be added to you in abundance. Amen? But Satan got a lot of sidetracked and people are being hurt and beat up because we as the body aren't doing these things. Amen? Hallelujah. Make sense, everybody? Else? Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? He's awesome. Praise the Lord. <laughs> What else does God have? God wants, he wants his righteousness to be established in the earth. His righteousness to be established in the earth. Amen? I mean, how much wickedness we have right now. Look, look at the perversion, the wickedness. There's something called the spirit of righteousness. When the Holy Ghost comes, he's the, he's the righteous. The righteousness of God comes through the Holy Spirit. He said when the Holy Spirit will come into manifestation, he'll convict the world of sin. Amen? Amen of, of um, righteousness. Amen? And of judgment. Sin because they don't believe. They're in the words convict them of. They're all of a sudden. Reason why we're seeing people just doing crazy stuff. There's nothing in the atmosphere to bring consciousness to them. Amen. They say that sin. What is sin? We call it good, evil, evil, good. But when the Holy Spirit is in, in the righteousness of God, His Spirit, then all of a sudden they, they can convict it. I need to get right righteousness with God, and they got a feeling that man, if I don't get right, there's judgment one day. That has to be through the Holy Spirit. And the Bible, God wants that right because it says, seek first the kingdom, and what else? His righteousness. Right? So God wants his what? Righteousness to be established in the earth and it comes through the body. We're the body. We're the salt. We're the light of the world. Show them the right way to come, but we're also the salt. What does salt do? Salt, back in those, they didn't have refrigeration back in that day. So salt would be a point upon meats to, to slow down the rotting process. Wouldn't stop it all the way. But what God is saying, when we do our part, we, it, you know, it's going, people will yield to the devil, but want to get as bad as it is. He can slow it down. Amen? So God wants his what? His righteousness to be established in the earth. Turn to Hosea chapter 10. Hallelujah. Isn't God awesome, y'all? And we're the body of Christ. We, that's why we, he left us here to do the same things that he did. Amen? That's, after, that's before Joel. We'll go to the table of contents. You get there quicker. Amen? Hosea 10. God wants his what? Righteousness to be established. Hallelujah. So we've got to seek not only the kingdom, but also the righteousness of God as well. Amen? <clears throat> Verse 12. It says what? So to yourselves in what? Righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Why? It's time to what? Seek the Lord. How long do we seek him? Till he comes and rains righteousness upon you. So God is saying it's time to see. That's why if my people will call by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive the sin, heal. What? The land. Because when, when, the, when the church is flown with God, then the, then the power of God and the fear of God falls upon the earth. Amen? And people get convicted of stuff. Like even they're not walking with God, they feel like something, oh man, I can't do that because it feels up the presence of God there. Amen? And it make it easier when you share the gospel with them to get saved as well. So when we're doing our part, when we're seeking God, breaking up, you know, 
uh, sown righteousness in our life, bringing up a foul ground of our heart, seeking with all the heart. He rains righteousness down in the atmosphere all about us, in our nation. And, and uh, all of a sudden, all that wickedness and that violence and perversion gets slowed down. It's not as bad because righteousness is in the atmosphere. It's like a rain in the spirit realm. It's raining right and clean all that rain comes and cleans all the dirt off the streets. Cleans everything up. Amen. All of a sudden, the cleanness is in the atmosphere. Them demons get out the out of the atmosphere to move upon these people, do all this wicked stuff. Because what we're praying until is a reign of his power of righteous, the righteous ways of the righteous presence of God. Amen. So that's what you got to seek him. Seek first the kingdom of God. Things that pertain to the kingdom. And all these things we want, we desire from the natural realm. God said it'll, it'll be added to you in abundance. But we got it backwards. We're seeking the add-ons first. Amen? And the main thing we get in the background, are you with me now? God said we need extreme focus change right now. Because the world needs what we have, the Christ in us. Amen? We, like, we, we got to get off the, out of the dead, dead bones and scattered bones and we got to come together. Amen? Bone to his bone. Amen? Get the flesh back on us, the word. Amen? The flesh uh, back on us and we need to get the, the breath of God breathed back into us, the life of God and his power. And we can rise back up as a mighty army, amen? Amen, and we can bring his power. We can bring his glory, bring his healing anointing, amen? We can bring his righteous presence, amen, his ways into the earth and then become salt and light. And a lot of the stuff, then the demons will be beginning to back off to leave me alone, leave me alone. Are you come to destroy me? Yes, we are. <laughs> Tell him to shut up and get out and he'll do it because he gave us authority. But if we're not walking in that power, you, the devil's like, you no power flowing in you. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The last thing, I'm, I got five all together. God wants his plans and purposes established in the earth. He wants his plans and his purposes. Amen? Established in the earth. I mean, God, God says, you know, your kingdom come. What else? Your will or God's will? God's will be done. God has a plan and purpose for our lives, for uh, for your personal life, everybody in the body of Christ, but that, that plan affects everybody else. Because when God gives you a plan, it's just not, not just for you. What he has for your life is to affect many other people. And he got, so God wants his will, his plans, his purposes to come to the earth, thy kingdom come. Amen? So we're seeking the kingdom. We're seeking God. Okay, what, what is your plan? What is your purpose, God, for my life? What is your plan and purpose for, for this thing here? As we seek him, he reveals his plans and purposes so we can do his, his will on the earth. Amen? And his will, you know, knocks out the devil's will. Amen? So we got to find out what his plan, because God has plans and purposes for the things on the earth and for our personal lives. So that's part of, the, that's part of seeking the kingdom to find out his plan, his purpose. That kingdom come. That will. Seek first the kingdom. Right? Turn to your Bibles to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter, let's see. Which one to go to? Isn't God awesome, y'all? Oh, he's good. 29. Jeremiah 29. God wants his plans and purposes established in the earth, his will. Amen. 29, look at verse 11. <clears throat> it says what? I know what? The thoughts of the translation. I know the plans that I what think or have for you. You know God's plans for your life. He's thinking about, he got thoughts that he, that he has in his mind concerning your life, things he wants to do in you and through you. Amen, works he wants to do through you. He's not, he said, I know him. We don't know him, right? What kind of plans are they, God? Plans what? Of peace, not of evil. To give you what? An expected end or, or hope in the future, one translation says, right? Okay, God, well, how do I find, I need, I need to find out your plan, God. Does it happen automatically like apples fall off a tree? No. Then, verse 12, you shall what? Call upon me. You shall do what? Go and pray to me. That means you're going somewhere too. Right? With the body of Christ. You will hearken to me. And what's going to happen? And you shall seek me. Seek first the kingdom. And find me. When? When you shall search for me with what? And I will be found of you. Amen? And of your heart. He said, our next verse, I'll, I'll be found of you. So, you're not going to find God's plan and purposes with half-hearted attitude. You've got to go after it. 
Amen. Um, Paul and Silas one time was in, a, um, in the book of Acts. They, they were praying. They came to prayer meeting. They went not just you have your personal time of prayer, but they, they said you go go. That means you come together with the body of Christ. And when you pray the body, there's a different anointing where you can hear it much clearer because it's a lot. It's a, it's a hell, hollowed out place when you come together. And they were praying. They were in part. They were doing something that God wanted them to do. But there was time for a season change. And as they were praying and fasting, it was a five, five of the ministry fasting and praying. Said the Holy Spirit said, said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work we're in to call them. And they got they got download of the plan and purpose of God. And they, and they set them off and they went to their apostolic work and they went and began to go change the world. Amen. And the heathen, uh, they, they were in all the, all the wickedness, I mean, in witchcraft. And they, they would change, whole cities would be changed and come to Christ. Because what they sought God for his plan and purpose and they found it and they did it. So what God's will was be able to do, be done on earth as it was planned. The plan he had in heaven, he got a plan in heaven. But he wants that plan in heaven to come on the earth. But you're not going to get it till you seek him. When you seek him, he revealed the plan for your life. And when, whatever, you, when, whatever he asks you to do, he backs his plan. When you go and do it, the Lord will work with you. Confirming that word, confirming that plan. Has angels with you, power. Amen. Demonstrations, amen. Because he wants to use you to affect the world. Somebody say God is good, y'all. Hallelujah. Whew. Last scripture, turn to Colossians. Colossians. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Seek first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Colossians 1. God wants his plans and purposes. Establishing the earth. A lot of us doing our own will, not God's will. I think this is good. I'll do this here, God. I, you know, I ain't got time. To, I, got too many, I got this to do, God. I ain't got time to really seek you. So I'm going to do this. Sounds good. I'll put this in place. Amen? There's a way that seems right to man, but then there's a way of what? Death and destruction. I'll call it seem right street. Come on, y'all. Colossians chapter 1, verse 8. Hallelujah. That's what God wants from all of us. Amen. That's the one. Yeah. No, verse 9. Verse 9. With well, this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, now this is something you should do yourself. Do not cease to what? Pray. What are you praying for? And desire. How many got a desire for something? You got to pray for something. You got to desire something first, and you got to pray for it. Like David said, I desire, pray, I'm thirsty for it. That's a hunger and thirst, right? Desire and pray for what? That you might be what? Filled with what? The knowledge of his will. See, God said if his will, how you, how are you going to get his will on earth if you don't know what his will is? So you got to seek him to find out what his will, the knowledge of his will. Filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom. See, what, what it means once you get what God wants you to do, then you got to find out how he wants to get it done. Amen? He has a special way to get it done. Seek him for the wisdom. Right? Isn't there something else? And what? Spiritual what? That means you're understanding with your heart. Your heart is your spirit. In other words, with God, a lot of times you, you, when God talks to you, your head is thinking one way, but God wants you to understand it from your heart. A lot of times people hear something from God, they get their own interpretation on the thing. And they, they got head understanding, don't have heart understanding. Amen? So you want God, when he speaks, because his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. And you can put your own interpretation that's totally off base. So God said, once I can reveal my will, and I'm going to give you the, in the wisdom of how to, and also the timing to do it. Amen? And the wisdom of God. And then God, he wants you to have a true understanding in your spirit. Amen? What that means. And why he's doing it. You're seeking for the knowledge of his will. Seeking for the wisdom, how to get it done. Seeking for understanding. Amen? Of, of the purpose of what he's doing and what it really means. Amen? So you have a few equipped with the, uh, what God has for you. The devil can't talk you out of it. Amen? Isn't this something, y'all? Why does, why does God want you to? Why? Verse 10. Why? So you can walk out worthy of the Lord, all pleasing him and all. How many please God? And what else? Be fruitful. So God wants you to be fruitful in the works, in the works he called you. Jesus said, the works that I do, so you do also. Fruitful means to, to prosper and to have good success in the works. So when it says fruitful, it's talking about being, having, prospering. Having good success in the works that he puts to your hands. 
but you got to seek him for and then continue to increase in God's knowledge. But you have to seek him. So uh, he said, pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Well, first of all, you can't do his will if you don't know his will. Right? I know the plans I have for you. I know what, what I got planned, but you got to seek me, amen? And you pray. You can pray this prayer daily. You should pray that everybody should be praying this prayer until you, till your heart's filled with the knowledge of God for your heart, amen? Filled with the wisdom of, of how to put it in the timing when to go and filled with understanding what it means with the purpose, why he's doing it, amen? And then you, you strive to walk in the place, please it, and you'll be fruitful, amen, in the works that God puts to your hand because God's will is being done on the earth, amen? His kingdom is coming. His will is being done through his body, through you and me. Amen? Why? Because we made up our mind we're going to seek first the kingdom. Amen? Amen? Then the, then the stuff that we need, they said, you know, we, need, we talked about you need food, you need clothing, you need housing, you need transportation, you need money, all the stuff we need. But the Bible says these are the lesser things compared to the kingdom of God. If you put these things first, seeking these things first, you're here for a short period of time. Amen? You're, you're building an eternal things, eternal rewards in your life. It's going to last throughout eternity. And then all these other things that you need, which are temporary, I will add it to you in abundance, the add-ons, because you're focusing on the main thing. Amen? Because the people leave here, like I said, leave here all the time. I, mean, I hear somebody pass away, man. I'm like, man, you know, and some of the people I know, they, they were, their whole life was just seeking stuff. God was in their thoughts. Or some, they were some Christian, they just, lived, you know, just barely got in there because they just, you know, just all they did was sought stuff and never sought the Lord. And you stand before God in the Bible. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Give account of how we lived on the earth, what we did, how we sought the Lord, did we do his will. And the Bible says that it's going to, all our works going to pass through the fire. And said, and if, you, if your works remain, you have, you'll get a reward. Amen? If your works remain, that means you, you, you have gold, silver, precious stone. That means you did, did it God's way. You did what God wanted. You did it his way with the right heart. That's gold, silver, and precious stone, eternal things. But if you did, sought all this, this the world stuff and these things, and barely just got God every once in a while, just got enough, they said that it'll burn up like wood, hay, and stubble. Amen? And so you'll, you'll, you'll be saved, yet so is by far, like, like they say, on the skin of your teeth, but you had no rewards because we spent all our time going at this stuff. Amen? Uh, that's not going to last throughout eternity. Instead of going putting the kingdom first and letting God add those things to our life. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus said, I think it was in Mark chapter 10, there's no man that left off having houses, lands, uh, brother, I mean, they all the stuff we want to do, natural stuff in life, right? For my sake in the kingdom, who will not receive a hundredfold back in this lifetime, named houses, lands, all the stuff we want, you know, with persecution, the devil's still going to attack you, you know, plus eternal life in the kingdom. Amen. So we got to get our priorities right. Guys, we need an extreme focus change because the world, they're crying out for God's hand. And God's like, I need my body to start seeking me so I can pour these things from above. If you were risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Amen. When Christ sits at the right hand of God, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen. Christ, who is our light, life, when he appears, we shall appear with him in glory. He's about to appear soon. Did this help you all tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory tonight. We magnify your name. We bless you. Whew. Hallelujah. I want to rend our hearts, God, before you, God, and make an adjustment in our heart, God, that life is short, God. You're not guaranteed how many years you don't know life is like a, it's like a vapor, you said on this earth. It appears for a little while and we're gone. And all that's going to matter when you stand before God throughout the eternity did you seek me. You seek my kingdom. You seek my righteousness. My ways. My purposes. Manifest to manifest my power and glory in the earth. Did you seek my righteousness? Ah, seek my will. My plan. My purpose. Hallelujah. Because this thing's on the earth is very short compared to eternity, God. And I pray, God, that you grab hold to our hearts that all that's happening in the earth right now because the devil has little resistance. In the churches, especially in America, God, we love entertainment, God. Ain't it being entertained? Man's wisdom instead of God's word. 
And people love it. They love to have that. But we're coming to a time where the devil, the violence is rising up. The vileness, the perversion is going crazy, God. Because we're not being the salt, God. Because we're not seeking, putting first things first, God. And I pray you wake us up, God. Awake us out of that spiritual slumber and sleep. God, awake us. Awake us, God. To what's really going on in the realm of the spirit, God. Awake us, God. Let us rise from that deadness that, that we become alive with your power and glory, God. Hallelujah. And begin to seek you with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, God. Until you reign righteousness, begin to rain down upon us, God. In our atmosphere of our lives, in our, in our homes, in our communities, God, in our nation, Father God. Ha! Huh. Because righteousness is, is exalts the nation. Sin brings it down. Is what we're seeing the results of sin, God, in our nation right now. So we come before you right now, God. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, our lukewarmness. Seeking other things before you, God. And we turn back to you, God, with all our hearts, God. All our soul, all our strength, Father God. We need to find out who we are in you because we're called to be in your image after your likeness, God. And no higher call than that, God. And as you, we seek you, you reveal who we are, what you plan for us to be, to do, even to receive, God, from you, God. And let there be a, a, a spirit of, of, of my mind, of desire and a hunger and a thirst to get to, to go after you like never before, God. And David said, loving kindness is better than this life itself, natural life itself. He's talking about natural life, your loving kindness. In your presence and seeking you, my mind, things that pertain to you is better than my, all this natural stuff on the earth, life on the earth. And we got to get to that part. And that's when you begin to come into our lives in the midst of all the craziness we're seeing now, all the violence, the perversion, the demonic craziness that we're seeing right now, God. We, we're, we're your, we are your temple, the body of Christ, individually and collectively as a body. And you can work miracles, God, but we have to go after you with all our heart, God, so you can come into our environment Come into our situations, come into our homes, God, come into our families. So you will, your will, you, what you plan can, can come into manifestation. So we got a hunger for you. We got a thirst for you, God. Got a long for you, God, to see your power, see your glory, the miraculous things that happen, God. See your righteousness. Hallelujah. Find out your plan. Find out your purposes, God. Shh. Seek your wisdom, God. Hallelujah. We're in dangerous times, God. You said the days are evil. Last day, you said that my, my dangerous times will come when the culture of society will be extremely fierce and violent. You said that in Timothy. It's happening right before our eyes right now. We're here. Hallelujah. So we praise you and we give you glory and we give you honor tonight, God. We just worship you right now. We praise you. We take glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we see that, that message tonight? Can we see what's happening in the body of Christ right now? This, this is where God's calling us. He's, like a, he's calling us to, to refocus because things are like, God's like, oh God, why don't you do something? God's like, hold it. I got you on the earth as the body. Amen? And we, where the enemy got us sidetracked after things that don't, they, they matter, but not, they don't matter compared to eternal things.